Good evening. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming tonight. Um, I know it's a little strange having no prelude music, but we got enough music coming this evening, so I'm hoping it'll all be good. Um, so uh, first off, again, thank you. This is our first um, Christmas performance since 2019. Um, it's kind of surreal. Um, and so my speeches are a bit rusty. So if I'm fumbling over my words, we'll just blame it on the last two years. Um, <laughs> so um, we're very excited for this evening where we normally have um, our Christmas cantata. Um, we are changing it up a little bit and we have invited more members of our community to join us this evening. So we're hoping that we can make this something a bit more regular as well. So along with choir performing tonight, we also have our string band performing. Um, we have some solos from some other instrumentalists in our community and in our church. So I'm very excited for this evening's performance. And at the end of it all, I like to invite you to sing along with us with a couple tunes you might know. Um, my daughter's in the back. She might be singing along with us. Um, additionally, um, what am I saying? You can also blame it on mom brain. We'll just go there. Um, so this evening, I will say, following COVID protocol and guidelines, um, our performers, all of our performers are COVID vaccinated. However, the majority of our performers will be wearing masks during the performance. Um, there might be a couple who choose to take off their masks to better support their performance. Um, I do promise you that they are COVID vaccinated. I have seen their proof of vaccination as well as they are COVID safe um, and negative. That does mean, however, that in order to ensure the safety of everybody here this evening, that those of you in the audience keep your masks on and remain your masks on for the entirety of the performance. Um, so we really appreciate that. Our community members and our congregation members are very important to all of us, and we just want to ensure that everybody is safe and healthy moving into this holiday season and into the new year. Um, additionally, if you would like to make a free will donation, they are accepted at the back of the um, sanctuary. Our donations this evening are going towards our Winter Nights Homeless Shelter um, Fund. I believe Pastor Mike mentioned something about that later. Um, but it's a great, great ministry that is intended to help families in the community um, kind of get things back on track. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful ministry. So thank you again for coming. Um, if you bear with me to put on my mask to allow me to sing better, um, and then we will get started. Thank you again. Um, I will invite Pastor, if you don't mind, before we get started, to open us up in a prayer. Let us pray. God of love, you have so much compassion for your children in the world, everybody, in whatever situations we are. You know us, so you gave your son Jesus Christ for us. Tonight we are celebrating the coming of your son Jesus Christ into this world, into our community, into our family, into our individual life. We thank you and give us your spirit so that we can be fully open to your invitation, to your presence, and we be united with you through music and through time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This is an old time um, traditional Christmas song from the 1800s. We tried to find two songs that nobody's heard of before, so <laughs> at least we had heard of them. tonight a special person who's having a birthday today so 
Will you all sing with us one round of happy birthday to our very own Diane Lee? Happy birthday to you. This uh, next song is a, um, from an African-American spiritual from the 1830s. And um, it's a little unusual because there's a train in the song, in the story of the song. And um, I know all of us have heard the Christmas story for many, many years. And you may be thinking, you know, I don't remember hearing about a train in the, in the uh, nativity story. Was I sleeping during that part? Or what? So, um, so I did a little research on Google, and apparently it refers back to two things. One was the Underground Railroad to help people escape from slavery, and the other was looking at Jesus as our, a vehicle, a train engine to help take us to salvation and to freedom. Um, and this is also a uh, sing and response type of song. So we're gonna sing Mary Had a Baby, and your job is, my Lord. And we're gonna sing, Mary had a baby, oh my Lord. Mary had a baby, my Lord. People keep a coming, here's the train, get on. So please feel free to join in. Mary had a baby, my Lord.
this next song is not in the um, uh, brochure, in, in a bulletin, but um, before Olivia uh, tries to whisk us off the stage, we'd like to do, we wish you a Merry Christmas and invite you to sing along with us, please. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas.
Alexandria could not stay quiet at the end. <laughs> she knew. Wow, beautiful night. We are celebrating Christmas with uh, music tonight. Music is more than entertainment on our ears. It is our prayers. It is our confession of what we believe. Music is an inspiration to our minds. It is a sharing of good news. It is our proclamation of the word, the power to broken souls, driving force to transform this world. The oldest song in the Bible is not in the book of Genesis. It is in the book of Exodus. It is a song of Miriam, the sister of Moses, written right after Exodus 3,300 years, uh, years ago. <clears throat> the Exodus chapter 15, verses 19 to 21, it says, when Pharaoh's horses and chariots went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. Miriam, she was a slave girl. She was a Hebrew girl. But she saw the mighty hands of God lifting up the lowest of the low, up high, and delivering them into a safe place. When our string band sang tonight, Mary had a baby, an African-American spiritual. We joined with that Hebrew girl the slave girl who was singing the God of liberation and freedom 3,300 years ago in Egypt, in the continent of Africa. Do you know that um, Charles Wesley also wrote uh, many Advent and Christmas carols and we know two of them very well. One is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, and Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We know uh, Charles was not a preacher like his older br brother, John Wesley, but he was so gifted with music. He composed over 8,000 songs and hymns. And most of his songs were written after he listened to his brother's sermons. He wrote lyrics in ordinary terms, simple and easy, so for anyone to follow. But they were also very deep and truthful, enough to express the mystery of faith. Then he would use tunes of popular songs of the time, like songs that were sung by village people at pub each night as they were drinking beers. So people didn't have to learn a difficult tune 
like church songs at the time. In that way, the good news became available to the poor, to the laborers and miners, all those who could not afford coming to church Sunday for Sunday worships. As the word became flesh, the gospel became available near to everyone in the world. And that's the Christmas spirit that we are celebrating tonight. Well, Olivia sang beautifully, Oh Holy Night, my favorite Christmas carol tonight. It was, uh, do you know it was written by a non-church goer and composed by a Jewish man. Um, it was made by two French musicians in the year 1843. Both the writer Placid Capo and the composer Adolf Adams were born Catholic, but they were very, they had a free spirit, so much free spirit, uh, so they could not conform the hierarch hierarchical and discriminative teachings and the closed, mind, closed minds of the church at the time. So they stopped being church regulars and then became outsiders. The writer, Kapu, was condemned as an atheist and the composer became a Jew, a true outsider of the church at the time. So this carol was declared unsuitable for Christmas services by church authorities. It was criticized being too focused on humanity and humility. The fact that all men and women can have souls was considered to be highly radical at the time. So the church tried its best to bury the song and somewhat succeeded. However, the English translation by John Sullivan Dwight revived it in uh, 1855, focusing on the universality of the human spirit. As we have heard tonight, the third verse is so powerfully liberating still, still to our 21st century humanity. It says, truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace, chains, he shall break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. So let us keep singing songs of liberation, songs of hope, peace, joy, and love as we celebrate and wait for the coming of Christ. So here are two things that, I, that I, I would like to encourage you to do. First, please, join the choir. <laughs> <laughs> we have a beautiful choir, uh, singers, very, very friendly. <laughs> And we have also handsome professional pianists. 
<laughs> you know that. <laughs> and the most wonderful, one and only choir director, Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> How can you resist this invitation? <laughs> and also, join the string band. Yeah? <laughs> we have the one and only <laughs> band leader, Joe Kick, waiting for you. <laughs> you will enjoy all the things that we do together. It's fun, and it is always so fun. So come. So secondly, um, your donation tonight will go to help Winter Nights Homeless Ministry. I would like all of us to take our Advent journey with the poor, with the homeless, and with the vulnerable, and with the lonely. Thank you for your kindness and generosity. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You have helped us to be united tonight through Christmas songs and spirit the Hebrew girl, slave girl, and African brothers and sisters on the freedom train, laborers who sang Christmas songs at evening gatherings at the local pub, and French brothers who sang loud and clear, the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease, as they sang holy, O holy night. Thank you, God, for sending us your son, Jesus Christ, and giving us him the love and the peace that he is bringing to us. Merry Christmas to you, our Father, and peace on earth by your grace. In your name we pray, amen.
Uh, now at this point, we would like to invite you to join us in the celebration and in the singing. Um, so in the program, you will see the sing-along portion. Um, oh, come all ye faithful and joy to the world. You will find this in the United Methodist Hymnal. It is the thicker blue book. Um, I will say, however, we are just doing the first verse of both songs. So I think you might know them, but in case you need the words, you can find them in the Methodist hymnal. So please join us. Thank you.
we're looking forward to chatting with you in the fellowship hall. So thank you again for coming tonight. Um, if we don't see you on Sundays, we'll expect to see you next year. So thank you.